The basic purpose of a web application is to read an incoming request and send an HTML in response to it. The HTML to be sent may be the markup of a login phone or of rows of a tabular data and like that. So, our application has to read a request, process it, and send HTML to the caller. The Razor pages are like PHP pages that provide the markup of that HTML. The developer puts that HTML and interspersed .NET code into a Razor page. The intermixed code allows the data to be programmatically inserted into that HTML. The .NET code might, for example, be used to run a loop to generate the rows of a table. A Razor page is a pair of two files having the same name, but different extensions. Let us take the example of a page called index. One file is named as index.cshtml. This file contains HTML markup mixed with .NET code. A special syntax is used for merging HTML and .NET code. But we will take that later. The other file is named as index.cshtml.cs. This file contains a C-sharp class that handles page requests like get and post. This is an extract from the Solution Explorer of some project. It will help us get introduced to Razor Pages. We will do the practical in later lectures. Razor Pages are placed in a special folder called Pages. Pages is the folder where the runtime searches for the Razor Pages by default. This is the index.cshtml file. And this is the index.cshtml.cs file. The CS file looks like this. We will not discuss the details as of now. As we told earlier, it contains a CS class with its name obtained from the name of the page. It is named as index model in our case. This is the CSHTML file. It has to start with a page directive. This is the name of the backing class. The remaining part contains HTML and .NET code. This primer should now help you get started with Razor pages. Thank you.